Is it a mushroom? That, I w they kind of can look like a uh, sea cucumber, but this is not a place a sea cucumber would be. Right, because it's a not cliffside. Yeah, because it's there's not much sediment, but they can be because there's some bacterial growth and some sedimentation there. Mm. Uh, or can be a dead sponge also. No, no, no. Mm, okay. Would you like to zoom on? Not going anywhere. Uh, let's first zoom on the corals, okay. fans, and okay. then gradually move. Oh, it's such a beautiful place. Sounds good. Yes, the red, the red, uh, the small red one, red octocorals are pseudoanthomastus, the ones which were following a line, the small uh, round ones with polyps sticking out. These look like, the darker red looks like a paragorgia. And I can see a, several squat lobsters, chirostylids, uh, on this colony here. That's such a beautiful view. I remember learning about um, shallow water corals, like when they touch each other, they actually kind of send out tentacles or um, like fibers that, um, for lack of better words, they're like battling each other for space, um, like competition wise. I can't really get in close there. There's coral up above me. Roger. Um, do you think these corals like have that kind of interaction too, these deep sea corals when they're glowing so close to each other? Yeah, so that is basically a common nidation feature where this where they send out the nidae or the stinging uh, cells uh, for protection for defense mechanism. But uh, given how closely they're growing, I wouldn't say that they do because there's, uh, I think because they're getting enough food in the water column because they're sticking out from that ledge so they basically want to be in the face of the uh, water current Jane, that do is you know how to in the swap uh, the DSC and the PC4? Uh, I think so, one second. Oh, there's a beautiful sponges in the background. Those are, I don't know, probably around two meters tall, the sponges in the background given how big these coral fans are. So so we saw what looked like a paragorgia or can be a hemichoradium, as Asako pointed out rightly. And we are seeing several different kinds of primnoids, which are another kind of... Uh, the DSC and PC4. There's some chrysogorgids, definitely. There's something bushy more towards the right. We can have a look at it later, which can be a black coral or something else. Sorry, which one? You don't have to circle. Do you know about the sponge growth rate? Because I know uh, reading up on some of these corals, these deep uh, sea corals, some of them are so old, like thousands of years old, right? Um, do deep sea sponges also take as long to grow or not as much um, because you know they're made of other materials Kajina, like spongins versus um, calcareous uh, uh, skeletons? Um, I know that they have quite uh low growth rate, slower growth rate, but uh, I'm not more. exactly sure about it. So this looks like in the family Chrysogorgiae and uh, in the genus Chrysogorgia, uh, most probably and there is a crinoid on it. Mm, I, yeah, I have to check what kind of Chrysogorgia or Pseudochrysogorgia it may be. But definitely in the family Chrysogorgia day. That is a very big colony. Yeah, Tina also confirms that it looks like a Chrysogorgia. Uh, okay, you can go away. Uh, yeah, we can uh, move away and.
and if possible, if we could zoom in on any one of the whitish colonies that we are seeing. Sorry, so I can't hear you. Oh, sorry. Uh, maybe this one or, yeah, that. So any of the lighter whitish colonies, we right. would like to have a zoom on it, on them. Because some of them look from a distance like bamboo corals. Okay, can push oh, in there a, a bit. Oh, that's a beautiful crinoid hanging there. A couple of crinoids yeah. from the chrysogorgid. And there's an ophuroid sticking out. Do let me undo uh, control alt x on that keyboard. I like how you can see the Bertle Star's legs yeah. like wobbling in the current. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Tiran, would you s can you s see the? I think I'm seeing the nodes and internodes. Click it is a map yellow guy right, right here. Because we can see the. Um, oh, are you just doing it over there? I'm yeah. having a hard time seeing the nodes yeah, myself. Fine. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you where. Like here. And here are page the toilet arrangements or node internodes? I'm confused. Mm. I think, yeah. Is that the full zoom? I'm not too sure. I'm not sure if that is the full zoom. Uh, PC to video four, yeah. Click that. Yeah. And then you should find still yeah. That's what you want. Yes. Okay, That's go away. Yeah, I don't see any notes. More towards the base, there's a dark. Yeah, I guess they're just not as dark as mm, what yes. I'm used to seeing. Wow, this is this quite is impressive. Yeah, let's say view. Uh, no, left. Wow. Eyeball. You can see how more towards the. This one here Sorry, looks like a bamboo. Over there, Dan. This is a yeah, bamboo coral. Okay. The one that's hanging more at the bottom and more brownly. On the top there is another primnoid. Would you like a zoom there? If possible, for sure. Yeah, if possible, zoom on the bamboo. There we go. Uh, we can do quick zooms, so because um, on the wall and there's it's too dense to uh, put a toe out to stabilize okay. the ROV. Uh, yeah, Roger. Yes. I absolutely. need to, I need the wide angle to, you know, otherwise we're gonna get in trouble here. Okay, go Roger. ahead there. Understood. Yes, this this is a bamboo coral. This is a so we can coral. zoom right in. I just can't, you know, stay there forever. What is that? Is it one of those ring anemones that are sometimes I seen hear you. with? Uh, there's a dark pinkish structure there, which can be one of the ring anemones, which are sometimes associated with the bamboo corals. But this is definitely a bamboo coral because we can see the dark and white pattern. I still can't hear her. It's Am I speaking too low? Okay, go ahead. No, I can hear you. I think it's, I don't know, okay. another issue with the audio or something. Okay. Mushroom corals, yeah? Yes, the pseudoanthomastis. Yes, we can, uh, uh, we can move in whatever direction is comfortable for the ROV. It looks like a paragorgian right there, the yes. pink ones, right? Yes, there are paragorgians and also the lighter ones are paragorgians. Oh, okay. Uh, they can, those darker ones can be hemichorallium mm -hmm. as well, but we are not sure, so either one of them. There's so ones. much to zoom in on here. Yes, <laughs> so whatever is possible, we will like a zoom on those colonies because there's so much. All these? Uh, whatever, yes, yes. Uh, definitely we would like to have a look at this one if possible. And uh, this colony here, these two if possible. But Roger, quick zooms on those if we can. Yes. Uh, 
Okay, Jenna, quick zoom there. There's a lot of ophiroids on this. Yes, squat okay. lab, ophiroids, ophiroids, it's full of ophiroids. So just another day at the office, eh? <laughs> For you? I is wish every day in the okay, office was like this. And is this a primnoid? This I massive one? So. With all I of the ophiroids? So, yeah. I've never seen that many ophiroids on a coral. Yes. Really beautiful. I'm getting some great uh, Christmas tree ideas from this. <laughs> <laughs> but I definitely would say that it's Don't a worry. lot lot of days in the offices. Like Are you guys taking digital stills back there? Yes. 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 Right. Yes. Yeah, I've got the camera. I'm shooting opportunistically and then at, at any request. Oh, oh wow, yes, this lighter great. colored, yeah, oh this my. big colony that's coming up. We, that's all. We can have a look at that also. I'm not convinced. Is wow. <sighs> what that is? The that's one in the corner one. sticking out is probably a bamboo, the thin one, like this. That is a massive Yeah, there's quality. just so much to look at. Wow. It's so beautiful. I feel like there's like angelic music playing in my head. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking we should probably take a Niskin here. Oh. Yes, that's actually a good idea. I think Ooh. they just did a Niskin. They, they, um, there wasn't yeah. so much of coral. I don't know if there was as much coral yeah, diversity and d density when they took it, but I can, let me read the notes, make sure. I don't think so. When I came in, they were over this kind of a promontory, little, you know, sticky out bit. So uh, it definitely was not. And for the any viewers? Of the, uh, of the promontory. For who are not familiar, um, we're referring to Niskin bottles, which are used for sampling water at depth. And I believe these water yes, samples will be was. used for eDNA, so environmental DNA. And basically, we can take a snapshot of what species are in this area because they're shedding things like mucus, um, corals are shedding their cells, um, and those will have some little amounts of DNA that we can then um, bring back to the lab. So instead of uh, going through this huge field of coral and trying to ID all of them, um, we can just get a snapshot of what's here by analyzing the DNA in the water. Yes, absolutely. And this is just so fascinating to even think that within uh, when we walked in, it was mostly rocky substrate still is a rock face but there was there was hardly any coral communities and then within five minutes we are seeing this massive wall which is covered with sponges and this huge and massive coral fan so it just says that how much the direction of water flow where they are in the uh, sea floor how much elevated they are how all of these matter uh, greatly in terms of the diversity and the density of the corals. Uh, will it be possible to zoom in on that almost in any one of those o these almost barren uh, corals so we can have a closer yeah. look at the skeleton and the polyps ahead, if Jaina. possible. <laughs> yeah so these are bamboo corals. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Though <laughs> that massive uh, Okay, go away. Yeah, we can we can continue moving. The big uh, fan earlier, I thought I saw some banding, but I wasn't sure. Yeah. So um, now this gives us a good chance to look at this. I think we should go ahead and take Nisk in here, since where yes. they took one before wasn't well, in an area of high this diversity. This pseudo the master is clustered on the top. Sounds good then. This is beautiful. Yeah, Nisk would be a good idea. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Taylor Ann. That's a great it's my suggestion. Job. No worries. <laughs> Another chrysogorgid, another bamboo. Yeah, we see uh, some small stoloniferous uh, polyps also uh, on the rocks. That's another bamboo. Uh, Oh, 
off to Coral City there. So yeah, uh, whenever we are in a position for an iskin, it would be a good idea. Right. Thank you. And just notice we had um, a bunch of new viewers join us. Um, thank you for tuning in from the UK, Australia, Norway, Italy, India, Hong Kong, Germany, Czech Republic, and Canada. Um, we're really having a wonderful moment currently looking at this beautiful wall of um, deep sea corals on this unnamed seamount in Papahanaumo Kuakea. Um, so, a really special moment here and um, we're really just amazed at the size of these corals um, some of the creatures inside of them uh, if you're watching on YouTube feel free to head to our um, live stream on nautiluslive.org if you want to ask any questions so you also have a chat box there as well What Niskins have been taken so far? Uh, Niskin number six. What? Uh, Niskin number no. six is the only one that's been fired. Niskin six has been fired? Yes. Something I need to know. Roger. Thought I did that already. Is this sample 042, Taylor Ann? That's correct. It will be. Thank you. I hope you can stay awake for this watch, Upashana. We'll we'll wake you up if we see anything interesting, but you know. <laughs> exactly. You know, I'm really grateful to Elsa for making the coffee that <laughs> is keeping me awake. I didn't need anything. Yeah. This is just such a boring dive, right? <laughs> <laughs> Oh. 
really dramatic. This topography. Yeah, it's like a it's very, very, and especially I was watching the dive from um, our uh, common area from the deck there earlier, and there was there was hardly any coral communities, and then we yeah, come across what? this rock face, and this is what we are seeing. So maybe the vertical nature and the currents, things yes. are flowing by yes. here. Yeah. And that was exactly. sample 042. Somehow this rock What was the Niskin here. number? Uh, five. five. Roger. It's bringing in more water, which is higher nutrients. That is allowing these huge communities to, huge uh, coral fans to grow. And also the sponges, they are tall. I'm sure, sh I'm sure that some of them are definitely taller than me. Also that doesn't say a lot, but still. It's nice having the lasers back for scale. Yes, yes, absolutely. Be because that 10 centimeters is tiny. Tiny, it's lost, face, yes. Those corals <laughs> are very large. Even those are quite big anthomasters, pseudo anthomasters that we are seeing. The strawberry corals along the edge. And it's wonderful how they're just aligned almost in a line along that ridge. This yeah. is again another big bamboo, mm -hmm. that bamboo coral colony that we are looking at. I guess you wouldn't want to be, um, you would want to be in a line uh, on that ridge and not really like behind another coral in that line because you're just not going to get yes. as much food passing yes. by. And because they don't go, grow into fans, oh. right? There's only a certain size that the pseudoanthomastis can oh, really? gain. So uh, they have to be in sure. very advantageous positions. Mm. Yeah, nobody wants their neighbors building in front of your view. You absolutely, know? absolutely. Everybody wants it. <laughs> oh, they're a, the recent. Somebody tell that to people on Oahu. <laughs> And we also have brisingids here on that, what looks like a dead sponge. I think it has everything, everything one can ask for. <laughs> and there's probably a small um, scleractinian colony, the, the skeleton that I'm seeing, the solid white on the rock that can be. And there are some big Munidopsis uh, squat lobsters. And I noticed earlier those brittle stars, the ones on the darker pink coral were darker and the brittle stars on the lighter pink coral were a little bit lighter. Is that something like for camouflage? Is it because they're, do they eat the coral polyps and then yeah, like, take that uh, color? Yes, it can be camouflage. I don't know what imparts the color in the ophiroids, but in many organisms, uh, the color of what they're feeding is also in is, is something that contributes to their own color right. so it can be that but there's some beautiful primnoids uh, paragorgia or hemichoraliums there's again that uh, chrysogorgia that bushy chrysogorgia or chrysogorgid So after we get a nice look here, we're still 500 meters away from waypoint two. Uh, and I know that we wanted to get up to the seamount for some of Virginia's research. So I just wanted to call that out. Okay, okay. Yeah, we can gradually continue moving in that direction. Thank you, Mia. You're welcome. Don't have to thank me for pulling you guys away. I feel bad. Oh no, you, I mean... We're not listening. You have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we could stay here for a while. We, we do, have, mean, a, do have a track to follow. You can say you're not listening, but I'll just ask the bridge to move. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll start screaming from the back row. But no, obviously we can gradually start moving in the direction that we have to. Otherwise we can spend probably the 20 hours of the dive 
on this rock face and still not have identified and seen everything. I think we should go up and down this rock a few more times. Yeah. No. What do you think? That would be lovely. No. No. <laughs> when are you going to get that opportunity again? That's, that's a beautiful primnoid again. We're seeing different kinds of chrysogorgia. This is a chrysogorgia. This is the darker orange to the bottom of the screen is definitely a chrysogorgid in the family chrysogorgiidae. Uh, probably in the genus chrysogorgia or pseudochrysogorgia, but I'm not, uh, I, I don't know how to differentiate between chrysogorgia and pseudochrysogorgia, the two genera. Uh, absolutely stunning, absolutely stunning imagery as even Tina is pointing out in the chat. So beautiful. The broken off pieces of coral that leave behind that um, hold fast? Is that yes, what it yes, the fast? base, yeah. They have died, but the base remains. It kind of looks like the craziest um, rock climbing wall. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Those look like a rock climbing wall. I don't. Imagine anybody would Weird. Be. I've never seen such a... Such a drastic team, just as we turn. Cluster density like that. Yeah, it's crazy how they all just stop out of nowhere. Yeah, it's beautiful. I'm sure if, like, if we can pan down a little bit, maybe we'll still see some of the colonies, but there's definitely advantage in being on that rock face, which, why, why, which is why we are seeing that extremely high density there, but as soon as we are turning, we are losing that density. Yeah. And did you, can you see the dive profile and the dive plan? Uh, sorry, Mia, were you talking to us? Yes. <laughs> yes. Sorry. Nobody listens. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, no, we're listening. What'd you say? I said, did you see the dive, uh, the profile in the... the let, yeah, I have it open. Yeah, yes. so it looks like we're going to be making a bit of a horizontal line along this area. Not not quite. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm fingers crossed we see more things like this. But, you know, we never know. Uh, so I don't want to pull you away, but we also need to get moving. No, yes, absolutely. No, absolutely. I see some like black markings on the profile. Are we near any one of those? I think uh, she means of the waypoints. Yeah, so the, the profile, those black lines are contour lines. Yeah. They're 100 meter intervals. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. So we are moving towards waypoint two. Yeah, waypoint two. And okay. if you see on the, the upper map, yeah, you can see a bit of the relief there. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I get, I understand. Which direction is your uh, waypoint? Uh, it's a bearing of 262. West? Yes. Roger. Oh, that's a beautiful, I would say that's a corallium or a hemichorallium, the orangish pink that's in the center. There's another bamboo coral towards the left. There are uh -huh. glass sponges. Oh, look at that. Fly trap? I don't think that's a fly trap. No? No, it doesn't have the thick stalk. There are some other anemones also that can fold like this and hang on to corals. I didn't expect that. Look at that big one right above you. Yeah, that is a beautiful rock. Oh. Waypoint two calls. Yes. Even the view from uh, Atlanta, you can see Come up a bit. the yeah, size of the coral fans in comparison to Hercules. Not paying attention to the uh, eye in the sky there and didn't see the overhang. Wow. Whoa. I hate it when those sneak up on you. Uh, that's also a party. Yeah. I mean, you guys are watching. If <coughs> all three of us are watching this camera, we don't. Somebody should notice that. I should have noticed it, but that was. It's interesting how the corals are on the underside of yes, the rock. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. That's probably because. That's good. Up high enough. Uh, maybe 
the way the Can rock is projecting out actually. that is Can obstructing the water flow and when it's moving uh, below the under the rock it's probably slowing down a bit mm -hmm. that's helping in the corals grow there and trap all the nutrients that's coming with the water but it is definitely very interesting how just this much difference in the same rock is creating such yeah. a stark difference in terms of density. The rock looks a little precarious. Too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. It's such a of, uh, ten meters beautiful north structure. One good shake could well. uh, send that down. Yes, please. It's, uh, we are again seeing that take chrysogorgia, the chrysogorgid, chrysogorgia, primnoids, uh, paragorgia. Hemichorallium, Pseudoanthomastis. Yeah, it can move 10 meters north. I need it. Need it now. <coughs> it's amazing. It is amazing. It is stunning. It's beautiful. Upasana, it's like a game of how quick can you name everything in frame. <laughs> <laughs> Octocorals. <laughs> <laughs> That's a cheat. <laughs> I think if if you really want us to look at everything on even this little piece of rock, right. I can take up twenty hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's that yellow? Yeah, the bright yeah. yellow. Yeah. Could we get a zoom on uh, one of the mushroom corals, the ones with that are I'm dark red five. with the, you know what those are, Dan? Down right? five, Jacob. Down five. <laughs> Possible for a zoom there if we can. And those are quite big, pseudo antomastis. I'm so glad that uh, Asako the other day explained. Yeah, I need a little bit more leash, Hans, before I want to zoom in there. I'll lose it. Okay. Roger. I think there are some. Um, Doing what I can here. <laughs> gastropods or bivalves mm. on the rock. The white dots? Yeah. Oh, I thought. Probably. Those aren't. Um, like Look at what's underneath that rock. It's like a octocoral city under there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like a hidden city. And they're just upside down. That yeah. is amazing. Think about how wow. strong the whole fasts yeah. are where that it allows them to hang upside down from a rock. Yeah, this is the high rent district. <laughs> 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 Premium property. <laughs> huge yeah as uh, Tina is pointing out there is probably two species of anthomastis or pseudo anthomastis that we are what did I just do while trying to pronounce pseudo anthomastis <laughs> I went pseudo anthomastis uh, <laughs> so we're probably seeing two different species here that's again a very beautiful bamboo coral wow. fan over there it's huge. Yeah. I don't know what, two meters, two, it's like 200, almost, I would say two, two and a half meters in width, right? Wow. Oh, yeah, if you can look at Hercules and exactly the Argus cam, or Atlanta cam. Atlanta cam. Because it's hanging down as well from along the ledge. Knob Hill. It Very Knob fancy, Hill. fancy mansions. <laughs> hmm. This is the Hawaii Kaya corals, right here. <laughs> <laughs> This is definitely a gated community. Oh yeah, for sure. Oh, it's <laughs> the rock is the gate. <laughs> yeah. If only there were a couple of fishers, they would have been the guides when guarding the property. Mm -hmm. Haven't seen a. Oh, I mean, I guess besides the one fish I missed, we haven't seen any 
so far, right? Uh, yeah, sometimes they can be scared of by the ROVs and lights right. and the noise. But I would have expected that there would be some fishes around here. We can see lots of recruits of mushroom corals. Again, the beautiful bushy chrysogorget, the hemichorallium, the orange one looks like a hemichorallium or a paragorgia, probably hemichorallium. The brambly uh, bamboo coral towards the left, I keep getting confused between my lefts and rights. I need post-its here on the screen. That is amazing. Just to be able to be sitting here and watching this while, I mean, watching this in real time, that itself is amazing. Yeah, and we had a viewer also ask like how deep we are and we're about 8,000 feet and um, or 2,400 meters deep. Yes. So that's just amazing that we can see this. Yes. Beautiful. So we're good here? Yes. Uh here or anywhere else close by, if possible, we would still like to have a look at uh, a zoom in on any of the mushroom corals. Uh, but it, if it's difficult here, we can move and have a yeah. look at them a and little probably later just a as well. Quick zoom. I see those uh, anemones on the bamboo coral as well, some ophiroids. Primnoid, that's a big mushroom coral. Look at the view of the fan. The bamboo coral fan. Yeah, like the way the light is coming exactly. through Exactly. That's amazing. It's stunning imagery. Hans, are you getting some photos there? Lots. <laughs> <laughs> I think you said competition worthy. I'm going to need some for my lock screen. <laughs> Cover page. Oh yeah, absolutely. And they can't even be in competitions. They're so beautiful. They're <laughs> beyond competitions. <laughs> <laughs> or like an educational poster where Upasana like uh, call. There's like a little box for each <laughs> one's ID. That would okay, be helpful too. Do a snap <laughs> zoom on that uh, mushroom coral. Good, thanks. Hold that That's for a second. Beautiful. Yeah, look at the size of those polyps. Yeah, and you can see here clearly why they are octocorals. Uh, uh, because each polyp has eight tentacles. So tentacles are those um, petal-like structures sticking out uh, at the end of those long extensions. So each of those are tentacles. So each are each one of those is a polyp, and each has eight tentacles. And if we see that from each tentacle, we have side extensions sticking out okay. which are Go called away. the pinules Thank which you. makes them the octocorals right what did you call it pinules pinules yes pinule p-i-n-n-u-l -N pinules yes <laughs> <Pinules>. <laughs> those are the little extensions, extensions from the arms the themselves yeah. yeah good thing nobody can see me moving my hands over here <laughs> And is that a uh, correct um, term for all morphology of uh, these octocorals? Yes, yes. So the presence of the pinules is a uh, synapomorphia of octocorals. That means it is a trait that evolved only in the octocorals oh. and is an identifying characteristic for the octocorals. And not in the hexacorals? No, mm -hmm. no. So Good that is know. the easiest way to identify an octocoral from a hexacoral. Do they have eight I mean, tentacles bit, so with no, pinules, or do they have tentacles without pinules in the multiples of six? Hmm. Hmm. 
Very cool. We are close to being on your level, but not, <laughs> <laughs> not quite we there. We all have our different <laughs> expertise. <laughs> I'll count the tentacles and get to nine, and I'll be like, okay, cool. High score. <laughs> <laughs> We're again seeing the bamboo corals, the chrysogorgids, there's some sponges, the hemichorallium, primnoids. And I imagine it's all about surface area for these corals, yes, right? Like the yes. pinules to get more surface area to grab more stuff out of the water. Yeah. And then all these beautiful branching shapes again, just to increase the surface area. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. You're correct. Tilt down just a little for me. Good, thanks. So we're good here. I hate to drag us away, but. Yes, we can continue moving. Yep, yep. So even from the Atlanta, that's a very interesting view. Is it like, uh, is it rounded? And this, what's happening with the central part over there? It's like a big U shape. Yeah. Oh, you it's can see it on the sonar. Oh, okay, okay. I see that. So we are on this side of the U, the back part of the U. Yes. Yep. Okay. Yep. I think that is what this weird shape is causing. Uh, Like the current? Yes, the water. Uh. Uh, something interesting that Tina just pointed out in the chat that the Pseudoanthomastis that we were zooming in on is probably a new species. Uh, but unfortunately, we are not in a position where we can collect it, but we can be on the lookout uh -huh. for these again uh, when we are in a better position to collect. And I'm sure this will be a good candidate for collection if it is a potential new species and because we are seeing so many of them uh, you, we can. You want to collect one of the anthomantis? Yes, yes. Anthomantis? Anthomastis. Yes, yes. Anthomastis. Dog toy. <laughs> yes, this pseudo anthomastis. The uh, mushroom coral that we looked at. Mushroom coral, yeah. Yes. The one that we were um, sp t talking more about how to tell the difference yeah. between a Octocoral and hexacoral. Yes, Tina is thinking that it's probably a new species. So we'll probably see them again in yes, a better position yes, to absolutely. collect. Yeah, yeah. We'll just keep that in mind. Yeah, we'll keep it in mind. When you say a new species, you mean we haven't seen it in this area before, or they haven't seen it um, ever? So according to how, uh, according to the chat, it seems like an absolutely new species, something that oh. we don't know about, because uh, yes. And would that be due to its size, or I don't know. Probably, I would. I would think the polyp morphology or the base morphology, and we can ask that. We can ask Tina. The wow. She is the anthomastis, you know, anthomastis person. So I hate to say it, but when we're in a position and set up, we're ready to move on towards waypoint two. Oh, we're getting there, Roger. And those would be the closed-up oh. mushroom corals, the little red. Blobs oh right. that oh, we are shrimp. seeing. And there's a shrimp. <laughs> Nematocarcinus. Wow. They they fit so much tentacles in yes. such a tiny space. <laughs> because it's water, right? Most right. of it is water, so they can wow. exude the water and shrink. Is that it's a crinoid? crinoid. Wow. It looks like you know the bush has a little flower on its yeah, head. Everything here yeah. is super sized in this area. Exactly. They're well, all well fed. Very from well this current. Fed. And they must be such old colonies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One in the future when we have a better idea of uh, aging corals, then we can probably come back to these images and have a better idea about how old these massive colonies are. But that's in the future. So, Mia, in the image on the high pack survey, when the lines are getting wider, does that mean it's steeper? The black lines? When, no. they're, wa when they're farther apart it's from each other? the opposite. The opposite? So they're 1,000, or sorry, 100 meters. Um, I think these contours on the screen, if you're looking at in front of me. Yes, I have the uh, same thing back here. In the, in the dive planets, um, they're 100 meter intervals. So if they're farther apart, that means it's taking longer to cross that 100 meters, right? Mm -hmm. So if it's it's small and it's like, oh, this uh, looks like okay. two meters versus to go 100 
meter for, you know what up. I mean? Come and then up. if you're that, up, this, this bigger one that if you're looking at over my screen, yeah, it's much wider, so it's uh, not it going to be as steep. Takes longer to cross. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Thanks. And just for uh, everybody's information, you can't move the boat west when there's a giant wall in front of Argus or Atalanta. So be patient. Thanks, Dan. Unless you want to, you know, slam Atalanta into the wall. Definitely don't want that. She's done too much for us the last few days. Yeah, Atalanta. <laughs> wow. The awe continues, though. This is amazing. It is, yeah. You know, was given the great quality of the vi videos and the five, images you that we see, more? many a times when I'm What's looking that? at them, I, I'm up five. Right. I forget that we are underwater, mm -hmm. and a part of me just wants to go on that rock, climb, and explore <laughs> and see what what there is. Yeah. There was a fly trap and enemy on one of the corals. Okay, that was off that side, right? Yeah. yeah. We are continuing to see a, very, a similar assemblage with uh, some stocked uh, glass sponges in between. Even the view from Atlanta is wonderful. It gives us an idea of where we are. Yeah, it's pretty dramatic landscape. Very dramatic. How massive is that yeah, bamboo coral? so tall. Yes. But it can also be multiple colonies growing side by side. Because I think I saw two bases. And do we know how these corals reproduce? Are they like broadcast spawners where they release their eggs and sperm in the water? Are they um, brooders, where they kind of like uh, have a larvae that they develop and then release that? Yeah, I think they, uh, they, they release the larvae for, uh, but it can differ between groups. I have to check. Mm. I keep forgetting which one does what, but they are uh, colonial and clonal, so they have, they oh, definitely really? pr right reproduce there. asexually, and along with mm. that, I think they release the. The uh, ROVs are right there at the moment. Uh, the, the larva. The larvae. Yeah. I'm just imagining the larvae on this current being like, <laughs> wee, wee. <laughs> And it also gives you an idea about the success rate, uh, how that differs based on where the larvae lands. Right, yeah. Or potentially, could that larvae get eaten by like another coral <laughs> as it's it like moving be. through this it area? It can be. There's a percentage on probably a dead sponge, may not be dead. The one that's like fallen over? Yes, yeah, you can see the red hanging like this. Mm. Cover shot. Absolutely. Mm. I wish I could take my camera down there and look <laughs> at each one of them and sit there. Yeah, I'm good for 10 with west. My no. Picnic bag of sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it looks like there's something with legs on that sponge. S Where? Can Squall you point it out? Uh, it's like white. Um, just above the green dots to the left a little bit, there's like a, is it a squat lobster, like a white squat lobster? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's probably a mutidopsis. Uh, 
Amazing. And on the bottom side, so I mean, I wonder if that means the current is going upwards. I don't know. I don't know. Probably like along the rock surface like this, because the rock is jutting out. Mm. So it's obstructing the flow and it's going around the rocks. It's probably slowing down. Somehow it's bringing in more nutrients to these uh, sides of the... rocks but not on the other sides or the other yeah Do you know anything about why parts of those sponges are kind of like a more brownish color versus a whitish color? Is yeah, the that, yeah. No, sorry. Is that part um, uh, no longer alive or something? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Wow, huge coral. Huge. Wow, maybe you'll need two breakfasts after this. <laughs> or a special breakfast of Fruit Loops. Victory Fruit Loops. Yes. <laughs> no Celebration Fruit Loops. Fruit Loops. <laughs> For those of us just um, tuning in uh, from all over the world, um, the United States, UK, Canada, Australia, Germany, um, Turkey, Sweden, uh, Philippines, and Japan, uh, thank you so much for joining. We currently are on an unnamed sea mount in Papahanaumo Kuakea Marine National Monument, um, looking at some pretty amazing um, areas of coral uh, concentration. Not currently what we see on the screen, but um, it's been an interesting uh, dive so far simply because of uh, the stark difference we see in areas that don't really have that much coral and then areas that have really, really large um, concentrations and large corals. So uh, thanks for tuning in and um, definitely let us know if you have any questions in the chat. Is that uh, one of the mushrooms you want to sample? Uh, can we just confirm with the shore side quickly, just to make Send sure? Right. That would be a good spot if it is. Yes, I I uh, asked Tina in the chat. Let's read. Oh, there's a little. What's Why that? is it true? Uh, <laughs> I just asked uh, Tina in the chat if this is the new potential new species that she was looking at. Uh, as soon as she looks like an old one to me. Yes, yes. So she says that this is the one that, this is the same kind that we were looking at before, and mm -hmm. we can go ahead and collect if possible. Got it. Thank you. It's so interesting the way it's like kind of see through. Okay, go in, please. Okay. 
Come down five, Jacob. Coming down five. And I missed it before, but what makes, uh, or why do you believe that this is a new species? Uh, so uh, Tina Molitsova, who's in the chat, she's an expert in uh, anthomastus and pseudoanthomastus. Sounds fine. So when we zoomed right. in, uh, she looked at it, and she thinks that this is probably a new species. Uh, I'm not great at identifying the different species within these genera but uh, probably from the polyp morphology and uh, the colony morphology that is uh, Go tight there, please, Jane. that is uh, what gave her the indications that this is probably a new species. The number of polyps maybe. Those are some of the main major characteristics that we look for when uh, the polyp arrangement, the polyp morphology, the colony morphology Ah, uh, you can push in. Pull in. Yep. So, how do you want to collect this thing? Uh, usually a slurp. Um, kind of like a uh, scoop it Smash up. Smash and slurp? Yeah, right. yeah kind of at the base, kind of with the hose. Right. Yeah, that seems to work with these mushroom corals. I think it will go in the slurp, okay? Yeah, it is kind of big, isn't it? Okay, uh, Jacob. Do you think it'll fit Let's in the it. slurp jar? I don't know. Okay, I guess it's worth Want me to try. flush out real quick? Or yeah, change cameras, yep. flush. Suction 50%. Suction stopping. What's up? I'm going to stop suction. Yeah, ready? you can stop and then switch to jar one. Yep. Jar one. Okay, I'll see. Go wide. Uh, Jaina, go wide, please. Video, go wide. Oh, that was a new one, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Now we get an LC to the count. <laughs> Porch out a little bit, would you? Porching out. Just give it a bump. Yeah, good for another bump. Okay, can push in there. Suction's off, right? Yep. Just gonna uh, push in a little bit for me, please. It's <laughs> gonna bump it and see if I can get it to uh, retract. Pull your polyps in, you. In there. <laughs> oh, 
there they go. This one doesn't uh, pull them all the way back in. That's no. what it looks like. Just the polyps, I think. The I would have expected it to... Uh, yeah, great up. observation, Dan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> have a wonderful... <laughs> And that is probably Wonderful one of gift the for the obvious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that is probably no, no, no. one Normally of the important Normally they put them all the way in. Yeah, yeah that's it's a real, actually it, a good observation. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, it's going to make it difficult to get in the slurp. Yeah, well, Dan, we were talking about the possibility of, of snipping and cutting. I don't think they need the whole thing. I mean, yeah. But I don't know if it's possible to um, snip. Yeah, I'm not too sure about... I think it'll it, Since it's a new species, you might want the whole thing. There might be something new about... Um, the morphology that Tina might need to see. I'm okay, not sure. Okay, yeah, that is actually yeah. a good point. Since we've seen quite a bit of these, yeah. more than it is, 10, it is it's looking big. okay to right take there. one. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's a good yeah. point. I think it'll go. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, my mind always goes for like yeah, morphology same. is. Okay, suction uh, on. Suction on, 50%. Okay, suction plastic on. when it comes 75. to. 75. I think at this point, uh, oh, there's a little off you right at the base also. Go away. <laughs> Don't get in touch. Yeah, I get think given yeah, it's the given <laughs> the extremely high quality of image data that we are moving towards or we have nowadays, we'll gradually move away from Can you try and brush it up against the rock to kind of like colonies for morphology. You want eighty percent? Go in. Hold what you got there. Uh, go full wide, please. Uh, open that front box for me. Opening front box. You ever uh, be vacuuming and get your dog toys stuck in your vacuum? <laughs> <laughs> Not all the way open, is it? Yes, all the way open. See what I'm gonna do here, right? Yep, and just let me know when I'll press zero and then I'll put the two tray in on the section. Let me know when. Yeah, go for it. See what happens. Is that off? Yeah. Good. Great. Nice. And that was sample number 043. Wow, well, awesome teamwork by our front row. Jaina, video engineer. Jacob Adelanto pilot and Dan Hercules pilot. Gonna put the porch in. Uh, stand by. Let go of this thing. And that went into Lambda, correct? Or went into the port side box. The yeah. port side, thank you. <laughs> Fancy Greek letters. <laughs> <laughs> I so don't know who Lambda. came up with that. They're very <laughs> clever, whoever they are. Lambda, port, or left? Take your pick. <laughs> I get the lambda left thing. I don't get the other part. I do it. I'm like, can I put the porch in now? <coughs> Roger, porch in. Porch is coming in. And Uposhna, if this is a new species, how long does it take to confirm something like that? Uh, once uh, any one of the experts in the field has uh, By the way, a subsample in their hand, yep. uh, so there are a couple of um, ways of up. doing it. Uh, no, no, there are two no. ways of doing it, or rather both are necessary. One is looking at the morphology right. and comparing it to the morphology of the known species. 
Uh, so and it could be an overhanging sometimes, cliff there. Uh, so. We can associate certain morphologies with certain species or certain levels of taxa, but many a times they have very converging morphologies. That means different species can have the same morphology or the same species, different individuals can have different. So the more, so morphology is very crucial, but along with that is the genetic uh, part. Let's move so about 10 meters, uh, for uh, octocorals, one of the major barcoding uh, genes how about one, three, five? Uh, is the mitochondrial is mutant that right? S. Is that the right way? There's an interesting story related to that. I'll get to that later. But uh, Is that the right way to move Atalanta off of the cliff? So uh, one would have to so see... So one way it hits the cliff, the other way it moves away from the cliff. Can you uh, put the rail cam back up there, please? Putting rail cam back on. Yeah, so um, one would have to sequence Yeah, so one would have to sequence the mute S gene and compare it to the four. other known species and if it is if it's a new species, it shouldn't match uh, the, the other known species. If it gets closer, the yeah. uh, sequence uh, from the same gene uh, that is that has been sequenced. So that's one of our dangers. So while we're it's all a matter of time, of a, a couple of months Atalanta from the point that someone the has it in their hand, and then the whole part of describing the species and reporting it. And there are other logistics, but that is the main part Project. of it. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's, so it's not totally uncommon to, you know, you saw me come up into the overhang, mm -hmm. so we can do the same thing with Atalanta. Oh. I got a little greedy there on the west move, not paying attention to. And just a note to everyone, uh, Dr. Ballard is yep. saying hello. Um, he said he's watching from our command center in Egypt. So thanks for tuning in, Dr. Ballard. This dive has been pretty amazing so far, full of um, really dramatic landscapes and these beautiful uh, pink and different shades of pink coral, really. So um, really amazing dive. A stylastrid. So it's No. I'm not sure what that yellow polyp was, but that was definitely different. Okay. And hello, no, Dr. Ballard. Five more. Glad that you're tuning in uh, and seeing yeah, this amazingness like with us right, right, right now. Quite I'm impressive. Gonna, yeah, Historical dives ever since we started that. Come over towards you a little bit there. Yep. Yeah, and come up another five. Roger. I'm standing by me for you to come to me to going up five. Yes, we were uh, looking at some bright yellow polyps, which look like the Stoloniferin octocoral polyps. No, I'm good for the moment. I think the big uh, vase like sponge can be a big eplectelid. Looks like you went in the right direction, Mia. Narrowly escaped a wall of death. Out of the danger zone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were 10 meters within. Oh, look at that sponge, the sacrocalyx. And, so wow. and there's a polysoma in the background. Everything here oh, is just big. so massive. beautiful. Can we have the lasers on the sponge stock so that Come up another five. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. Sorry, Elsie, say again. Uh, will it be possible to have the lasers on the sponge so that we can get an approximate idea of the height? Lasers the on the sponge, Roger. <laughs> Lots of sponges here. I'm not sure which sponge. The, the huge one, this one. The huge one, right? The sponge. <laughs> the sponge. <laughs> the sponge. <laughs> the tallest guy. <laughs> Is it a guy? How do you know? The tallest, the tallest the sponge. <laughs> the <laughs> it sponge. Clearly, <laughs> so it's a guy. Yeah. 
Catalina wrote in big letters here, critters have no gender. They don't. That yeah. is true. That we know well, of. How do they, Depends. How do they do it then? Yeah, we don't We don't. We know. don't know. It's so complex. Most inside. of these are... That's what? Wow. 15, 10. That's a beautiful view, 50. though. 50. Yeah. Wow. And we can see how big it is in comparison to the Bolasoma, which mm -hmm. is in the background. Mm -hmm. Look at the patterns. Beautiful. So the spicules. Yes. The middle looks like a plumeria. Oh, art imitates life, or life imitates art. Beautiful. So at least 30 centimeters? Probably. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 30 centimeters wide. At least, yeah. More. I'm trying to like do the math with my eyes. Probably <laughs> <laughs> 30 at the widest part, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. But I'm curious about the height. Yeah, the length of the stalk. Yeah, the length of the stalk and the. Yeah, I don't know if we'd see it perpendicular, but. No. You can get an idea in the uh, looking down camera. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Do you have a Taylor and a screen? What, do you have the screen on your screen? I do not, but I can peek over and see it. I was gonna say I can lend you my ruler. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, I'm about a meter away from the cliff. The sonar is so. So it's a meter long. It's about. yeah, I would say it's at least a meter. That's tall for mm -hmm. a sponge. It's the sponge. <laughs> the sponge. <laughs> the sponge to end all sponges. <laughs> I think this is the sponge probably, you know, who first saw us coming and informed the other ones. <laughs> this is such incredible. Yes, yeah, such intricate patterns, right? Mm -hmm. it, it just blows my mind to think that nature can come up with such patterns. And yeah that there is a reason behind these wonderful patterns that we see and the diversity that we see. If this pattern works, everything could have been this pattern, but no, everything is different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And like, oh, what benefit? Exactly. Well, touch so it. that yeah. everybody, it's, everybody is not using up the same resources, the same uh, space, the same habitat. So we're good? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. So we have the, yeah, it's They're totally gonna, like uh, a meter. I'll put the DSC on it for you there. It's meter sponge. Floating up. You'll get a close-up digital stills opportunity. The way it's hanging from that ledge. Oh, I like how it looks in Han's view. Yeah, it's That's not even beautiful. bent. Yeah. Uh, the stalk is completely straight, no? It's hard to do the DSC there. It's such a uh, the preview is like three seconds behind where I am. To right. We tried a few. That's good. Great. We don't know. I. Oh, there's another one of those Euroanthomastus. And okay, Jacob, we can come up five for me, please. That view from Atalanta on this corner is pretty crazy, too. Yes. And you can see how big the fans are in with respect to Hercules. Yeah. Honestly, in what I think I've been out for eight expeditions, I've never seen corals, like this many corals <laughs> this big in one area. Wow. Uh, That's a huge. Uh, tray, uh, That's really amazing. More sponges on the side. Two, 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 five, yeah. Please. That's a very good habitat. They are feeding very well here. It looks That's so healthy and happy. And that makes us happy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, the video's a little shaky there because I'm 
fighting the uh, pulling the tether around sideways with her. Roger. We chickened out and ran away from the cliff. We were deep in it though for a second. Park is doing some rock climbing right now, looking at the view. So Hans, I have a question. Sure. Did when um, you did the watch change with Val, did you guys talk a little bit, or did she give you sort of a rundown on the geology that we've been seeing so far? Or, um, of course, none of us here are biologists, and I was wondering if she had given sort of something for us to think You're about. Right. Just a little for me. Yeah, Val uses big words. <laughs> uh. <laughs> That's the best description yeah. I've heard. <laughs> One thing I know we have been seeing is dikes, geological dikes. Yeah, I um, heard that. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. That I, I'm not sure beyond yeah. that. Well, those would be vertical extrusions of, mm -hmm. of right. magma within. So, the, you know, they, they are they're like veins, vertical veins mm. uh, of intrusive volcanics and she was very happy of course mm -hmm. at the watch change and said there's very very obvious volcanics here and uh, I think she said lobed volcanics but again she uses big words yeah, yeah. look right there just a little <laughs> bit more for me <laughs> we won't right. fault you for not remembering them <laughs> thank you <laughs> it's been a long four days <laughs> yeah. oh especially yeah. yes absolutely yeah absolutely. I was just asking because it, it seems uh, quite different to the other seamounts that we had seen before. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, I, I would I would guess. Okay, 10 meters, uh, 250, 255, something like that. The, the volcanic formation, the igneous formation mm -hmm. of these plumes uh, sometimes can be more. Yeah, yeah, more in evident than others. Mm. Uh, Hans, probably you'll be the best one to answer this, or anybody here. Do we know how? Uh, so this is a sea mound that hasn't been explored before, and uh, this was mapped for the first time. So this is uh, an unnamed uh, sea mount. So what is the process of naming sea mounts? So how? So I'm sure this will eventually get a name, but how is that decided? What is the process? I think it's a very careful process, and I think there is, you know, working group oh, five, please. to to do that. Also considering the cultural importance of the place. So, you know, I'd imagine the the, the uh, Native Hawaiian uh, working group with and the monument. And of course, that's a multi-agency monument. Would be involved in naming things in this region, absolutely, and, and consider it very carefully. Yes, it is always interesting to know how Five. things are assigned names and categories from a policy and protection level as well. Pashana, do you know a little bit, or anyone, um, do you know a little bit about how new species are named? Um, so we could maybe think about how that's different from naming seamounts. I know you were mentioning what the um, process is of a new categorizing a new species, and then so what would we, what would the naming process be? Yeah, uh, so it's interesting. I can give you a little insight because currently I am 
learning that process myself a bit. Uh, rather, I would say that uh, I knew uh, theoretically the process, but I'm going through it right now. So, uh, so there is a first of all, uh, it's simple and complicated, <laughs> as with everything in research. Mm -hmm. So there's a taxonomic code that exists. So sometimes uh, it is, it can be a new species, but at the same time, it is also important to understand that there were a l were lots of names, lots of species that were identified before, but then they have been moved to other. Uh, taxonomic groups or levels so if uh, given the work that's done it feels like oh some of the former uh, genera or the species names need to be resurrected so there is a process for that uh, sometimes things have been grouped together because f until recently most of the taxonomic work was done on d done based on morphology because right. that is what those were the techniques that were only available to us with gradual advan advances in molecular biology, we are now using genetics or genomics to designate species, genus, or ta various taxonomic levels. So when it comes to a resurrection, then you have to find out who was it, uh, if like given the description, it fits a certain family or something, and you see that, oh, something like this was uh, described at one point in time. But then researchers or scientists thought that, no, they are not different and they have been grouped together. Then you have to find out who had first described it. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter who has removed it or worked on it eventually, but who was the first one who mm -hmm. had. So that itself is a uh, digging process. You go through the whole history of that, that uh, sure. group, go back and find out. So that is one part. The other is, if you know that, uh, that it's a completely new species then uh, so we still use Latin so you have to look at root words uh, so you have to first understand what uh, so it's a species so you have either a genus in which you're fitting it in an existing described genus okay. or you're describing a new genus so if it is already in a genus that is described so you already have the genus name so within that the s a species can be named on various things it can be named uh, on the okay. place yes, it's up to the person more. describing it yep. I can uh, name it based on the place it was found. Mm -hmm. I can name it based on some characteristic th that I think is valid. I can name it after a person. And right. earlier there was a lot of practice of naming it after people right. close to you, but that's not done anymore. <laughs> but uh, more like, okay, some uh, biologist who, is a, who, was, who has contributed largely to this field as a as a respect to them, you, there are there are people after which there are several species. So you can choose what you're naming it after, but there has to be a logic behind mm. it. You have to explain it, and uh, it has to be in Latin. Okay. So, uh, so yes, and then you have to describe. You have to put in evidences for it, molecular evidences and morphological evidences, in, and you have to publish a paper on it so that the scientific community is aware and make all the data uh, publicly available as with any of our work so that anybody can replicate that and check that whether it's true or not. And say I describe a species and you go and find out that no, it doesn't need to be a new species, it is actually something else that was already described, then the species status, will it will have the name of whatever you're putting it in. But that name always stays. And whoever described it, it stays, but Come it may not be called me. that anymore. Just so it is a confusing process. I am not well versed in all the facets of it. I am I know it theoretically. I am going through it because I am trying to describe a new genus for the rock pens that we collected. Uh, so through that, I am also understanding it. And right now, okay. I'm in two minds about various names that we are coming up with. Yeah. But yeah. It's an interesting process. Yeah, fascinating. Yeah, and Papua Hanamo Kuakea has um, what Hans mentioned, the Native Hawaiian Cultural Working Group, mm -hmm. um, facilitated by the Office of Hawaiian Affairs and has different community members and cultural practitioners and researchers. And they've uh, been able to name some species in Papua Hanamo Kuakea, um, but so far um, I'm not aware of corals yet, but they did um, 
uh, name four bird species and one plant species. Wow. Um, so yeah, there's actually a whole webinar on it if you want more information. It was, I listened to it a while ago before this voyage and it was really interesting. Like, um, if I remember correctly, Give me part a of 10 the meters, uh, three zero zero, please. Part of the name came from like the sound of one of the birds. Um, so the name of the webinar is "What's in a Name: Continuing Hawaiian Naming Practices in Papahānaumokuākea." If you want to check that out, so well, that's wonderful. Yeah. If you can share it with us, I would love to. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Send it in the chat after. Mm -hmm. Thank yeah, you. I am aware of the bird names because I was looking up birds from this region earlier and uh, there it came up about those species. Oh yeah, species for your photography. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we are continuing to see magnificent sea fans belonging to the families um, Primnoids. We see some uh, Hemichorallium or Paragorgids. Uh, there was some bamboo corals in the family Keratoicididae. The Bamboo corals have been reclassified into a new family at this point. Though isolated the family still exists, but it's not these kind of bamboo corals. Um, another pseudoanthomastis. Again, magnificent um, yeah, five colonies, one. magnificent colors. What's that? Five uh, more. Earlier, we're using no, hemichorallium interchangeably with Paragorgia, or are those two different? Hemichorallium and Paragorgia are different. Uh, I think there has been recently a lot of reclassification. So I think Paragorgia <sighs> now is in the family Coralidae. Where? Uh, and Paragorgia. And Hemichorallium can look very similar. Mm -hmm. Unless, uh, like Asaka was explaining to us the other day, that unless you're collecting and one is brittle and one is not. So it is very difficult to identify one from the other, but uh, sometimes the polyp structures and the colony structures are more hemichorallium-like. Some of them are more paragorgia-like, which are very uh, abstract scales that I'm using, but unfortunately when it comes to octocoral, it's very difficult to identify even between families. They're not families anymore. But yeah, Paragorgia Day used to be a family. I think it has been removed and put into and the that's family Bubba Coral, Coral right? Yes. Yes, okay. Yeah. I know things more by their common names. <laughs> 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 I would say these the look yeah, more hemichorallium like, but there are some which look more Paragorgia like. Again, very abstract. But it's unfortunately, this is. I shouldn't use the word unfortunately. I would say that is the wonderful, mysterious part of the octocorals. Mm -hmm. You don't know what it is by looking at it. Well put. Mm -hmm. That should yeah. be the book title for <laughs> your upcoming book. <laughs> the Wonderful, <laughs> Mysterious World of Octocorals by Natasha. <laughs> yeah, because we're seeing several different I would need a writer coral though. species right now. <laughs> <laughs> that I can tell the candelabra story. Candelabra looking one is different from yes. the, the thin, stringy yeah. one. Um, but the they're both bamboo coral. The candelabra. The candelabra actually might be a primnoid, primnoid right? Yeah. Okay. Because the bamboo coral candelabra that I have seen, they are much bigger and mm -hmm. they look different. So it's more like a long stalk and then mm -hmm. it divides. Yeah. There's a chrysogorgia. The bottle brush chrysogorgia. Yeah. The one that looks like a single like yeah. tail, yeah. fluffy tail. Fluffy tail. And there's the bushy one also that's hanging at the ledge. Wow, oh, that's regular shape. Yeah. But that's a eel? Uh, yeah, that's probably a synaphobranchia. Not our Acanthonus. It would be scary, right? To be just in you the boat <laughs> swimming in that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it probably is. All of it is water. <laughs> So deep. I'm He's sure what's scary to the fish is the, the ROV. Yeah, 2,500 meters. No, wow. it, but it does look like, you know, when you're swimming in water and you look down and you see, like, mm -hmm. yeah. the deep depths, I feel like he probably doesn't. I That's mean, a synapho It bracket. probably doesn't feel that way. And what's the common name for and that? We don't know if it can see <laughs> normally living he in the like, dark. Uh, it's like, weird. It is here. Uh... Right, it probably can't even see cut anything. Throat. Oh, cutthroat, yeah. Oh, okay. 
This is quite dramatic, this topography. Really yeah, amazing. Yeah. We're getting right around the spot where it's going to be, love. I mean, in comparison, mm -hmm. not as steep. Okay. It's still not, you know, flat, but okay. there'll be, uh, for the next little bit, it'll be a little easy. It should be a little easier to navigate. Okay, that's great. That's Thank you, Mia. Is that what your 100 you so meter much, resolution Mia. tells you, is it? <laughs> yeah, we really <laughs> appreciate how you explain. That's what the contours tell me. <laughs> That is a the sponge. That sponge, yes. That is the weight. We have we have the this little rock head with all the corals on it is pretty cool. Come on, computer. Is it Roselle Day or you pe you Day? It looks like it has the same kind of backing as the stocked rosellids. Yeah, it, yes, yeah, they have, one of them have these cone structures. Ah, uh, let's see, is it this one? Come down five it's for a very, me. very um, prominent cone. Califacus. Do you want a quick zoom on that sponge? No. I can't tell, I'd have to get closer. Quick zoom on that sponge or not needed? Uh, we yeah, can, no. absolutely. Yeah. If the eels hanging out with That's us. That's a different texture Yeah, I was yeah. expecting. If possible, we want to take a quick zoom on that. But it is there in the Benthic Animal mm. Guide. It's definitely... Sorry, what was that? Oh, uh, yeah, they we're going to take a look at that quick zoom. Yeah. And it's also, it's also sure. coming into the still camera, too. All right. Get some good captures of this. Sorry, the name is uh, evading me at this point. They're called the gramophone-like sponges. Oh, gramophone-like, that's cool. It does look like that. And there's a squat lobster inside. Yeah, I like how there's... Uh, oh, I thought that was part of the sponge. Sticking out. It like looks a bit like a flower, like the flower... Yeah. Um, what is the name of that? Uh, they are coming steeple? yellow. No, no, no. Stamen and the stamen. The, gosh, this is like yeah. first grade science. <laughs> no, you're asking about the shape of the sponge? No, no, no we're, uh, the internal we're parts of the flower. Yeah. Completely unrelated and <laughs> doesn't matter. The lobster look like but it yeah. was. When, I know what when you're marine people about. try to describe terrestrial things. <laughs> the pistol? I don't remember. <laughs> no, that is a stamen, you're right. The stamen. Yeah, the stamen. <laughs> what was the, that's we're the male good? part. What's yes. the female part? Uh, Thank you. I forget. We'll get, we'll get back in there. I gotta move the boat closer. Roger. Google. So, back row, if you want us to stay tuned in, um, I gotta get a little serious here. We're pretty challenged up here with the uh, radically changing terrain and the overhanging cliffs and the giant corals. So, the. Um, the constant chatter, we're not able to focus on what you want as well as uh, operate the vehicle up here, navigate. And Understood, thank you. Uh, how far are we from waypoint two? Give me a second. Let me come up in a bit. Uh, you're good for now. I'm gonna come back down and come around here, try okay. to get a shot of this. But the one in the danger zone is the one right in front of us. Yeah. What's that? No. Me yeah, we're gonna go in and out of the uh, we're ten, uh, ten meter box here, but I need you guys to focus because we're gonna, you know, we have to push the envelope a little here to get the shot, so, uh, for me to wrap her around, I need uh, enough slack in the tether, so if we're far away in the safe zone, I can't do that because it's pulling on the vehicle too much, and then it will, you know, I'll wind up up against the rocks there, or uh, we'll lose the visibility, or we'll have a lot of collateral damage, it's like, 
lose control and okay, so I need to be able to let go of it and it not like you know come screaming around so uh, yeah we are gonna get up close and personal with Atlanta here So the other things to watch are the you know the other cameras, the tail cameras, the side cameras. We're in amongst the uh, you know it's not a flat even surface anymore. We're in and under and around. So for example, right now that you know tail tether is. close to touching the rocks behind me. <coughs> and I'm obviously, you know, wrapped around a big giant rock there. <laughs> but we're going to get a beautiful shot of this uh, sponge in the little squatty here. Gramophone sponge? Yeah, I've seen, I've heard people use that name. Wow, well, that's a really interesting texture. Yeah, I'm not seeing it in my guide here. Um, it, but but I'm still searching. Coming up. It can be something on the sponge. Yeah, the yeah. knobby texture. Yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not wow. sure it's a That's great. been a while since I've had a herc on the other side of the rock from Atlanta. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> push that envelope every now and then. So let me know when we're good. We're a little precarious situation. We're good? That's good. Thank you. We can get to a safer distance. I'll try and uh, get it in the DSC on the way out here. Roger. No promises, but... To answer your question, Taylor Ann, we were about 440 meters away. Awesome, thank you. Okay, come up nice and easy, five meters. Your lights are blinding Atlanta. I know. Uh, look right down a little for me. While you're coming up, use both hands. That's a nice shot, Jacob. Money shot there, buddy. That's great. Up five. That's a killer shot. Great view of Hercules. Yeah. He looked normal size for once. <laughs> Look down just a little for me. And come up just a bit. Put Herc in the light set. No still cam on Atalanta. You come up just a couple meters. I am taking still captures, though. And for our viewers online, if you're wondering about the view we're talking about, um, you can see that on our website on channel two. Um, or if you go up to the YouTube meters. page, it'll also show you the multiple different camera angles we have. And this one is showing the view from Atalanta looking down at Hercules, um, illuminating its lights on the court. Mm, so a little more. Oh no. Pretty amazing shot. 
Look down just a little bit more from you. Okay, go back over the wall here and continue on our ascent. Roger. I'm clear to come up a little bit. What's that? I'm clear to come up just a bit. Yeah, you can come up a bit. Come up with me. Just a bit more, just to make sure the tether's not no getting wrap. wrapped around the top of that thing. Yeah. Try and stay off to the side of you here a bit. Halfway through the middle watch. Time flew for you, didn't it? <laughs> yes. And we have some new viewers tuning in from uh, China, Italy, Latvia, the Philippines, uh, more viewers from Japan and Australia. Thank you so much for tuning in. We currently are s still exploring this unnamed sea mount in Papahanaumo Kuakea Marine National Monument. Um, as you can see from the footage, there are some very steep ridges that these corals are living on. Um, so we're just navigating our way through um, these different uh, topographies and um, taking a little time to be careful that we don't bump the ROV. So uh, we're going to give some um, extra space to our amazing ROV pilots and navigator to work their way around as we um, uh, continue to explore this uh, seamount. Yes, so. Hmm. That's a deep puka. Mia, how far to go to waypoint two? Uh, about 440 meters. Thanks. Horizontally or vertically? <laughs> yes. As the yes. crow flies. <laughs> seeing some uh, dead bamboo coral skeletons so there has been some disturbance here where s because of the s I'm sure that there's a threshold size that these colonies can grow up to and after that maybe they become too big and can topple over there are dead branches that fall off they get too big to support their own weight? Probably, or I don't know if they have come up with the mechanism come to... Come up uh, for yep. me there. This uh, tether happens yeah, to be yeah. smacking you there. To counteract that, given how huge the colonies are, the ones that we are seeing. Sometimes the current's favorable to hold it off of us. 
uh, depending on my position, and sometimes not. up another five for me. <laughs> I think it might be overhanging there again. I think in this spot there is a higher definitely overhanging yeah. <laughs> see the point getting closer to you as you come up there yeah density of these bam large bamboo coral fans and uh, so we look back down me Watch your sonar as you come up. Yep. So. Yes, we are not seeing uh, as many hemicorallium or paragorgian and colonies. I'll anymore. continue to come up with me, Jacob, so you can see both there. Okay. Let it scan and come up a little. And let it scan. Which yeah, we're good now. It's coming. It's going out. Well, it's extremely steep, over steep, overhangs. Yes. So maybe given the direction of this rock face, the colonies need to be of a certain size, uh, which the bamboo coral fans can obviously attain. But uh, hemicoralliums or paragorgid will not be attaining this height. They can be wide colony, wide sea fans, big, but. Okay, I think you're good for another five. Not nice this height from the floor. But that yellow colony over there can be a plexorid, the old family plexorid, which I think most of them are, uh, have been reclassified in, uh, I forget where they have been reclassified into. It's another sacrocalyx that we have been continuously seeing some sacrocalyx. Lots of mushroom coral uh, recruits there. Oh, so those single polyps are recent recruits, like new yes. mushroom corals. Yes. Gotcha. And those are next to that sponge. Yeah, it's the red dots on the rock. Wow, very cool. Then we have a hemicorallium in the background. some primnoids and smaller bamboo coral. I don't know. I don't know yet. Not on my sonar yet. That's good there, I mean, thanks. Huh. Look at that again, the top is fairly clear. Yes, it looks like hanging along the edge gives them an advantage. In, in this location particularly. 
Those are some massive fans. Do you think the current being kind of strong here helps the coral speed, but also could make it hard for larva to attach and settle down? Probably, probably. That's Herc on my sonar, yeah. What's that? That's Herc on my sonar, yeah. Uh, yeah, probably. How about the sedimentation on the top? Would that affect settling? Uh, if there's a little sediment? Yes. Uh, I don't think the, this amount of sediment will cause any hindrance to, hindrance to the settlement, but right. uh, the sediment and bacterial mat over there. That's beautiful. Yes. The longer colony sticking at the back would be a... Uh, You're good. Good for now, Jacob. Oh, sorry. Yeah, there's a sea star feeding on the bamboo coral over there. Nia didn't even pick up the stick. Took her stick away from it. coming up. Nice. Uh, will it be, are we in a position to do quick zooms? I'm trying, I'll try and come around for you also. Okay. Okay. Give absolutely. me a minute here. So yes, absolutely. Then we would love to have a look at the yellowish colony in the background. So this sea star is feeding on this coral, you mm -hmm. said? So it, is this um, a situation where it's averting its stomach and digesting yes. the coral polyps and then sucking? And then sucking it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Making it basically like a polyp juice. And <laughs> polyp juice. Look down just a little for me. my tail into the wind here so I don't know. Okay, Jana, do a Zoom there for me. Yep, zoom in. Uh, the business side. Wow. Yeah. Good, thanks. Is these sea stars have been quite commonly observed to feed on the bamboo corals. So it's stripped all of the polyps on those, right? Yes. Well, you can see that really clearly. Mm -hmm. And 
those are the tube feet that we're seeing as well, right? They're little yes. suction cups that they use to grab onto stuff. That good? Okay, mm -hmm. try one quick zoom there. Let's see if I can hold it. I got tail into the wind, so. That's great, thank you. Thank you so much. You can hold it as I come around there a bit. That's good right there. We have some viewers commenting that these corals are huge and um, they're probably pretty old, right? Mm -hmm. We can't really see an estimate of how old without sampling, but very old. <laughs> it's hard to get a good shot when you, uh, with the current behind us because trying to push Herc in and we're pulling back. Okay. Uh, That's good. You wanted to see some yellow coral somewhere? So many corals, I have no idea what you're talking uh, about. This one, if possible, but we can have a look at similar fans later as well. Okay. Is it yellow or is that just the lighting? The base, yeah, yeah. it looks yellowish mm -hmm. from, the, from the lighting or something. I just wanted to confirm whether they're the same kind of. Uh, wow, yeah, these are large. Yeah, and the pattern looks, there are uh, definitely multiple uh, yeah. kinds of bamboo yeah, corals that we are seeing. Yeah, it's a little yellow. Let's go hold that, Tex. About tight enough, I'll see that. Yeah, this would be uh, a bamboo coral again, but it um, kind of looks yellowish at the base, right? Yeah. So we're definitely seeing on the base there for me. two kinds of uh, bamboo coral fans, if not three. Good, thanks. And there's a small chrysogorgia at the base. That's great. Thank you so much. We can. Yeah, if, since we have good images, I can get better IDs for us tomorrow. Okay, you can go wide, thanks. So just to clarify, because I know earlier you said bamboo corals, you can see their um, nodes better towards the base because the tissue isn't covering the skeleton. Mm -hmm. But this is not a case of that. You think this is a different coral because of that yellow coloration? Uh, and so we did see the nodes, but sometimes the width of the node can differ between uh, species oh, or okay. the various genera. So here, the for this particular fan, uh, the nodes were very thin. So oh, okay. when we zoomed in, we could just see them as a dark line even right. towards the piece. But this one has like a yellowish tinge to it. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is the f this b big organized fan, if I may call it. These are mm -hmm. one kind, but there's another one of another another kind of bamboo coral fans that we are seeing, which are more brambly. It's not mm -hmm. that okay. organized, like sticking up arms, sticking up branches in various directions, and they are taller and with thinner branches as well. Okay, thank you. So, uh, so these are definitely the two kinds, but in these. A fan like bamboo corals. I'm not sure if there are two here or one because some mm -hmm. of them seem to have a yellowish tinge, which I'm mm -hmm. not sure is because of the light or they're a different kind. But we have good images and we can uh, confirm. Okay, man, I think I'm good for another 10 on your waypoint heading 265. If that's still the case. West ish. <coughs> So Dan, when you have time and are able to, could you explain a little bit of what made that really challenging for um, the dual system to um, navigate through? Uh, I know that was very steep, so it'd be nice for us to learn a little bit more about about that. The most challenging part was trying to do that in the middle of a frat party. <laughs> <laughs> no.